So it's another great time, guys, uh, of the accounting world. That is uh, mostly in the CPA world, the certified financial, that is the certified public accountants of Kenya. And in other regions like Nigeria, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Somalia, and other countries, which obviously watch my content in the accounting world, because accounting is the uh, same all over the world. Remember, we use the relevant accounting standards. So I greet you all. So it's another time I come in for this live session so that we can look at another area of accounting, that is a financial reporting, to be more specific, uh, on how you are supposed to do the financial analysis. So financial analysis, according to CPA Kenya, uh, financial analysis is a topic. Uh, under the financial reporting and analysis. Uh, and at the same time, it's a topic under the financial accounting. It's a topic under the financial accounting. And these are relevant in other areas other than in CPA. It's relevant in the academic courses, in other uh, professional courses uh, for the other countries. I know these are very uh, common topic. So, for today, uh, for us to talk about financial analysis, uh, remember that uh, we use financial analysis to analyze statement of profit and loss and the statement of financial position. So financial analysis is used in the analysis of the statement of profit and loss and the statement of financial position. So for us to analyze uh, the statement of profit and loss and the statement of financial position, uh, we use two methods. So that is according to financial reporting. Uh, the CPA Kenya. So we use two methods to analyze a statement of a profit and loss and statement of financial positions under financial analysis. The first one being ratios, and that is what I will be looking for today. And the next one being the common size method. Remember, that this is a method, uh, th this is a topic which was introduced the other day when they changed the syllabus. Uh, so they introduced this topic of financial analysis and uh, the financial reporting and analysis in the intermediate level. So, to go direct to the question of addressing this aspect of ratios, which is a method of financial analysis, I would like to look at uh, the RACIT in question from the financial reporting and analysis, the December 2022 question three. So it's a question of uh, 20 marks because the first part of that question, they were talking about the theory. And that is what I have uh, addressed here, the theory it itself. So that is what I have addressed here, the theory, whereby the first part of that question was all about, you talk about the limitations of ratios, the limitations of ratios. So which are some of the limitations of ratios as a method of uh, analyzing the statements? So the first one, the first limitation we can say is that it does not consider the fluctuation in values. So ratios doesn't consider the fluctuation in values caused by the seasonal trading. So remember the times changes, so but ratios doesn't put that into consideration. That is a first limitation. The second limitation is all about interpretation of ratios changes according to circumstances of each case. Yes, they will not remain constant, so the interpretation will be changing according to circumstances of each case. So there's no consistency. Number three, ratio analysis being a measuring tool of the financial performance of the company is very subjective in nature as it depends on the user skills. So it's subjective because it mostly depends on the user's skills. It cannot move out of the user skills. It's subjective. Another limitation is all about uh, any inherent drawbacks or limitations in the financial statements automatically reflects on the ratios. Another limitation is all about ratios based on are based on historical cost accounts. Reflects uh, the ratios based on the historical cost accounts reflect a misleading and outdated picture. Then we have uh, adoption of uh, different accounting policies from company to company, and for different accounting periods can also distort the compulsion. Remember the ratios we do compulsions, and since different companies uh, use different uh, policies. Uh, there might be a lot of distortion in that comparison when you are trying to analyze your statements. 
when you are trying to analyze your statement and compare from one period to another. Since different companies have different policies applied, remember that everything might not be, might not be going um, as required. Then we have ratio analysis that does not consider time value of money. It doesn't consider time value of money. And the definition of ratios are not consistent, are not consistent. I had already talked about that. Uh, on number two, interpretation of ratios changes according to circumstance of each case. So definition of ratios are not consistent. You can see how you can come with two points and you will get marks. Eh? Ignore inflation, it ignores inflation. Ratios ignores inflation. And it ignores qualitative aspects of the farm. So that is the first part of the question. December 2022, question three. So they were talking, they were asking us to talk about the limitations of ratios. So the second part of the question, uh, the second part of the question is all about now the computational parts. So and that is the area of focus. That is what I will be doing. The computations, the computations. So the computation part. So for you to get this question, uh, for you to get this question, I have shared the link to the past paper on the chat. So for the guys attending this uh, live session, you can go to that uh, chat box that is under the top chat. You can be able to see the link uh, I have shared there. You can be able to open this past paper, the financial reporting and analysis. So financial reporting, the financial reporting, which year? December, 2022, December. 2022, December 2022, question three, as I also opened from my end. So because anyway, in that, uh, in that, uh, in that question, what, what you are provided with is all about the statement of financial position for two consecutive periods. Then uh, you are given, you are given uh, other than the statement of, uh, financial positions, you are given the statement of profit and loss. You are provided with the statement of profit and loss. Then uh, in the addition, info, in the addition, info, there was no additional information, by the way, there was no additional information. So what the examiner was requiring you to do is all about do some ratios based on what? So anyway, let me open. I'm just giving out the question from my mind. Because I, 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 I have done it uh, previous, so let me anyway read specifically what they require. Let me not. Uh... So it's 2022, December. So that is financial reporting. Yes, that is the question. So uh, they were saying that in question, uh, it's question what? It's question four, not question three. Sorry for that. It's question four. December 2022, question four, not question three. This is question four, question four, question four. And remember the other day I did question five. Eh? So the question five was all about uh, statements of cash flows. So today I will be, I have done, I am going to do question four. So I am doing question four, that is. Eh? So I have done the first part, that is A. Eh? whereby they were asking about the limitations. So six limitations, just find the above case. So because they were saying ratio analysis has over time proven to be useful financial tool for decision-making. However, reliance on ratios for decision-making has inherent limitations. Citing six limitations, just find the above case. So we have given how many limitations? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and they were in need of six only. At the second part of that question, they are talking about uh, the following draft, the following draft, financial statements were extracted from the books of uh, Murima Limited as at that first December. So the statement of profit and loss, you are given a statement of profit and loss. 
and you are given statement of financial position. So you are given for two periods, December 2021, 2020. Mm -hmm. Remember that we are going to do a compulsion, eh? compulsion of the two periods, where analyzing the statement of that company. So we can create for each two ratios. So they need to calculate for each year two ratios. That is for 2020 and 2021. Two ratios for each of the following users groups, which are of particular significance to them. So they were talking about you do two ratios for the shareholders, trade payables, internal management, and you comment on the changes between the two years as reflected in the ratios you calculated in B above. So they need us to do shareholders ratios. Uh, we do some uh, two ratios for trade payables and we do two ratios for internal management. So remember that uh, for you to do the ratios for shareholders, you need to understand which, which type of uh, ratios you can do here. So who are the shareholders? Who are the shareholders to the entity? These are the people who have interest to the company. So these are investors to the company. And you know that very well we have investors ratios. We have investors ratios. For, from the investors ratios, I will pick two so that I can do for the shareholders. Then I go to the trade payables and internal management. So let's start from the shareholders. Let's start from the shareholders so that we do two. Then uh, we go to the trade payables. Then we finish with the internal management. So I think. If there's any question, you can comment, you can give a comment so that I know that uh, for the guys who are following, we are together. If there's any contribution you need to make. So it's 2022. So, so we can continue. And here is my number for the guys who would like to join my, my live classes. We do online classes. We always do online classes. I've been doing online classes on the other areas. Uh, we are almost uh, uh, now entering on the major parts of the syllabus. We, we are currently doing published accounts. So whoever would like to join my live classes in Zoom, the one which are done twice a week, every evening, that is Wednesday and Thursdays, you can use this number, 0728-765-46210. So for now, uh, let's do that uh, computations. As I explain what is required of you. So I will, start, I will be starting from the shoulders ratios. So the shoulders ratios. So the shareholders ratios. So who are the shareholders? These are the investors. These are the investors. So the investors. So I will be looking at the investors ratios. So investors ratios. I will look at two investors ratios. I will look at two investors ratios. So what, the, what does the investors ratios show? What does the investors ratios show? They measure the return the company will give the owners. It measures the return the company will give its owners eh, in cash. So what's the return the company will give its owners? What are the owners of the company? The shareholders. So the first ratio here I will pick is all about the earnings per share. I will talk about the earnings per share. So the earnings per share, earnings per share. How do you get the earnings per share? Which formula do you use? So earnings per share is equal to earnings attributable. You say earnings attributable. Earnings attributable to who? To ordinary shareholders. To ordinary shareholders. Earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders. You divide with what? You divide with the number of ordinary shares outstanding. Number of ordinary number of ordinary shares 
outstanding, number of ordinary shares outstanding. So how do you get the number of shares outstanding? Number of ordinary shares outstanding. So let's get the number of ordinary shares. So remember that we have two years. We have the year 2021. Yeah, we have 2021 and we have the year 2020. So remember that we do for the two periods. Huh? So we have 2021 and we have 2020. So if you go to the statement of financial position, you have the ordinary share capital, then you are told the price per share. You are told the price per share. You are told about the price per share. So the ordinary share capital there in my question for 2021 is 19,840. And this one is 19,840. So the price per share uh, in that uh, question, as per the statement of financial position, we are told is 20. So if you divide, here you have 992. This is 992. And now, after that, I can go and get my EPS. So I get an EPS. So to get my EPS, to get my EPS, remember that uh, earnings attributable to order and shareholders. You go to the statement of a uh, statement of a uh, profit and loss. Eh? Go to the statement of profit and loss. I think you are there. Once you go to the statement of profit and loss, uh, you can see you have the profit for the period. You are given the profit for the period. For 2021, it's uh, 23, 320, and for 2020, it's 19,040. So that is the earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders. The profit for the period, the profit for the period from the statement of profit and loss. So you take that one, which is, uh, I have said is 23, 320, you divide with what? You have 992, 992. So this one would give us an answer. Then for the year 2020, we have 19,040, the profit for the period. You divide with what? The number of uh, out, ordinary shares outstanding, which is 992. So if I use my calculator here, 23, 320, divide 992, this one is giving me uh, shillings 23, 23.51. 23 then the other one, 19040 divide 992. This one I'm getting 19, that is shillings 19.20. 19.20. So that is the first, that is the first ratio. That is the first ratio. The investor's ratio earnings per share, earnings per share. The second one is all about, I can pick another one called dividends cover, dividends cover. So the dividends cover. Then I will comment, I will comment later to understand more about the earnings per share and the dividends cover. And that is what they asked in the third part of that uh, question, December 2022 question four. So we have done the first part, I'm in the second part. And I will do the third part concurrent. As I talk about these uh, shareholders ratios, I go to trade payables ratios, then do the internal management ratios. So how do we get the dividends cover? Which formula am I going to use? So how do you get the dividends cover? You take the EPS over DPS. EPS over DPS. Earnings per share over the dividends uh, per share. So here, or you can talk about, or you can talk about the profit after tax profit after tax, you divide the dividends paid either way, either, either way. The EPS over DPS or profit after tax over the dividends paid. So we talk about 2021. Uh, so before I talk about 2021 and 20, anyway, we have 2021 and 2020. Eh? So remember that we need to get the dividends DPS, that is, eh? we need to get the DPS, DPS, we need to get the DPS. So how do you get the DPS? Which formula do you use? DPS, dividends per share. So here you talk about the annual dividends paid, annual dividends paid, annual dividend paid. You divide with what? You divide with, you can comment so that I know you are following. So annual dividends paid, you divide with the number of number of outstanding ordinary shares. Number of outstanding ordinary shares. So the number of outstanding ordinary shares. 
number of outstanding ordinary shares. So if you go to your a statement of profit and loss, you can be able to see the dividends paid. They are just direct dividends paid. So the dividends paid there is what about 48. You divide with what? Number of outstanding ordinary shares. Remember that the number of outstanding ordinary shares already we have them. We look for them at this level. We have 992 and we have 992 here. So 992. So and the dividends paid for 2020, dividends paid for 2020 is 4480 from the question, 4480, you divide by 992. So if I, if I do that, if I do that, I think you can give me the answers under the chart, whoever was a calculator. So 4800, if you take 4800 divided by, 4800 divided by 992, you have four point something, 4.84. This is 4.84, 4.84. Then the next one, 44.80, 44.80 divided by 9.92. What do you have? 4.52, 4.52, 4.52. So from there, I can be able to get my, my answer of the dividends dividends cover because eps is for for 2021 we have an eps of 23.51 23.51 divided by what 4.84 so i will get the answer there then the next one is a 19 point the eps for 2020 is 19.20 19.20 divided by 4.52 i would be able to give I would be able to give out the answer there. So if I take 23.51, 23.51, so 23.51, divide the 4.84. So this one is uh, 4.86. This one is 4.86. So for 4.86, so we always say that 4.86 times so for, for the dividends cover. Then the other one, a 19.20, divide, divide, divide 4.52, divide 4.52. So that is a 4.25, 4.25, 4.25 times. So, or I said this can be done direct. Eh? You can take your profit after tax. You divide the dividends paid. If you do that, you will be able to get the same answers. Because for the profit after tax from the statement of profit and that is statement of profit or loss, statement of profit or loss, the profit after tax is all about 23,320. 23,320. Divide the dividends paid. The dividends paid. So the dividends paid is this one, 4800. From the from the statement of profit or loss, eh, you would get 4800. So if you divide, you will get the same answer. The same way, the profit after tax, the profit after tax for 2020 is all about, according to my question, is 19,040. If you go to that statement of a profit or loss, uh, you will see this 19,040. You divide with what? Uh, 4480, which is the dividends paid. You will be able to get 4.25, 4.25. So what can I comment? What can I comment? Because that is what they were asking in the third. Before I move to the Nini, to the second ratio, that is for the users. Uh, because they were saying two ratios for each of the foreign user groups. We have talked about the shareholders. Eh? Before I move to the trade payables, uh, there's that uh, there's the third, uh, third requirement where they were saying you comment the changes between the two years as reflected in the ratios. So like now the first here we have earnings per share. So you comment about the two, the changes for the two periods. Eh? And here I will comment about the changes for the two periods. So for the EPS, what can I comment? Then for the dividends cover, what can I comment? So for the EPS, it has increased. Because I can see from 2020, from 2020 to 2021, it increased from 
shillings 19.02 to 23.51. So that is an increase of how many shillings? How many shillings? So 23.51 minus 19.20. So that is by four shillings. Eh? So EPS has increased. So you can say EPS increased. So the EPS increased by shillings four, by shillings four, by shillings four. This is due to what? What can make uh, EPS earnings per share to increase? This is due to increase. This is due to increase in profit after tax. Remember that there was an increase in the profit after tax. Our profit after tax is this one, 19040 to 23320. This one can also be seen from the statement of profit or loss. Eh? So the EPS increased from 19 to 23 by four shillings. This is due to an increase in the profit after tax without any increase in share capital. 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 There was no, in, without, without any increase in share capital. 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 Because if I look at my share capital, if I look at my share capital, if you go to the if you go to the statement of uh, with if you go to the statement of financial position, you can see there was no any increase. There was no increase in the share capital. It was for the two years, it was nineteen eight hundred and forty, but the profit increased. So due to the increase in profit after tax, uh, that one is what meant as the that is what meant. What the what, what the shareholders are getting per share? What the shareholders are getting per share to increase? What the shareholders are getting per share to increase by four shillings? So that is the interpretation you could have provided for the earnings per share. So it increased by four shillings due to the increase in profit after tax, without any increase in the share capital. What about the dividends cover? What about the dividends cover? What about the dividends cover? What could have, what could you use? What can you say? What can you say about the dividends cover? Because they are 4.25 times to 4.86 times. On that scenario, you can say dividends, dividends, it increased. Dividends cover, dividends cover increased by what? Increased by, so this increases, so it's zero point something. The margin is not that big. So if I minus a 4.25, from 4.86, I can get 0 0.6. Dividend cover increased by 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 times, 0 0.6 times, due to what? What can make that one to increase? Due to increase in profit, eh? because there was increase in profit, you know that. Eh? The profit increased from 19.042 to 23.320. So the dividend cover increased by 0 0.6 times due to due to increase in profit, due to increase in profit, due to the increase in profit, not fully reflected in dividends, not fully reflected in dividends, not fully reflected in dividends, not fully reflected in the dividends. So let's move to the second user. Let's move to the second user. So the second user is all about, what are the second users? Trade payables, the suppliers, trade payables, which are some of the ratios we can look at for the suppliers, because these are the people who sell to the company on credit. These are the people who sell to the company on credit for, for the suppliers, which are some of the ratios I can look at. Eh? So I will go to the liquidity ratio. I will go to the liquidity, liquidity, liquidity ratios. Liquidity ratios. What does the liquidity ratios tell the company? What does the liquidity ratios tell the company, guys? My good people. What does the liquidity ratios tell us? For the students following, comment something, comment something so that uh, I know what you think. What does the liquidity ratios tell the company? It tells the company about its ability to do what? To pay 
its obligations. So will the company be in the position to pay the suppliers? So we look at the liquidity ratios. We, we look at the liquidity ratios. It measures the ability of the firm to meet its short-term obligation as when they fall due, as when they fall due. So these ratios in include, so which are some of the ratios we look at for us to know that the company has the ability to meet its obligation. Accountants in the room. Yeah, that is a Joel. Joel, I see you are talking uh, that uh, Joel, to meet the short-term dates, yes. Joel, which, which are some of the ratios we look at to determine that the company is in the is in a good position maybe or not in a good position to meet its short-term obligations so there's a one common ratio everybody knows under the liquidity ratios very common one i'm giving some minutes for me to see a comment there's one very common ratio Which is this common ratio? So we call it the current ratio. We call it the current ratio. So we call it the current ratio. We call it the current ratio. So the first ratio I look, I will look at is the current ratio. You know this. I know everybody knows about the current ratio. So the current ratio is all about. Uh, it shows the ability of the company uh, to pay the short-term uh, debts. Like now, the assets, the current assets, are they capable of meeting the short-term obligations? So that is uh, the current ratio. So the formula for the current ratio is all about you take current assets, you divide with what? Current liabilities. You divide with current liabilities. Divide with the current liabilities. You take the current assets divided with the current liabilities. So let's talk about 2021 and 2020. Very simple, very simple, very simple. So current assets, you have them from the statement of financial position. From my question, my ad copy question here, I can see my total current assets is 199, 199 to 30. You divide with what? 84. So the current liabilities I can see from the statement of financial position is 84, 950. So I will be able to get the answer there. Then for 2020, from my add copy question, I can see here 184, 894. You divide with what? Current liabilities, 73, 73, 724, 724. So the first answer. Yeah, so the FICTA keep Chill, chill. That is very nice. You have already given us all the ratios, which I will do. Two, current ratio, quick acid test ratio. I will, the next one I will do is, by the way, the quick acid test ratio. And you see how this uh, first paper was uh, very simple. I, uh, for the guys who did this CT, I know some students uh, were complaining that it was difficult. It's all about understanding the topic. If you could have understood that ratios, like now, which are some of the ratios affecting shareholders, investors' ratios, which others which can affect uh, suppliers? You talk about the liquidity ratios because they, they will affect the company itself in relation to the suppliers. Then you go to the internal management, which are some of the ratios which can affect internal management. So I will be going there after I'm done with this. So using my calculator, the first for 2021, I'm getting 2.3. Yeah, we will say to ratio one. Eh? You know that for the current ratio, we will say to ratio one. And the other one, 184, 894 divided by 73, uh, 724. This one is 2.51 to ratio one. To ratio one. To ratio one. So then the next one, according to even FICTA has told us that the another ratio I can look at is the acid test. Eh? Acid test ratio. 
the acid test ratio. So the acid test ratio, also called the quick ratio, quick ratio. Uh, it's only that what I will minus, what I will minus from what I have applied here is only that uh, we have to minus the inventory from the current assets. So it's all about current assets, current assets, you minus inventory, then you divide with what? You divide with the current liabilities. You divide with the current liabilities. You divide with the current liabilities. So that is the acid test. Acid test. So meaning that uh, I would just talk about 2021, 20, 2020. So here we have 199 to 30. I minus the inventory. Inventory for 2021, according to my question here, it was 100,910. 100, so we divide with 84, because current liabilities already we have them. 84,950. 84,950. Then this one, this one we get the answer. Then this one is uh, 184,894. You minus the inventory. Inventory for this one is 80 to 90. You divide with what? 73. 724. So if you do your computations for this, this one will give you 1.1, 1 1.16 1, 1 to ratio 1, and this one you will get 1.42 to ratio 1. So what can you comment about the two periods for the current, for the current ratio, current ratio, current ratio, current ratio, current ratio, you can see it was 2.51 to what? Two point, two point, three four. So it has foreign, but only uh, with a small margin because it's some small points. It's two point five one, two point three four, two point three four. So here yeah, you can say that, you can say that this as foreign because it has foreign, it has foreign, it has foreign only in a small margin. Eh? Only marginary, only marginary, only marginary, only marginary, marginary. And it still appears to be quite sound. And it appears, and it appears to be still sound. Why am I saying it, it's still sound? Why can I say that it's still sound? And it appears to be still sound. Because of? Remember that uh, when uh, the current ratio is more than one and not, uh, not exceeding three, more than one, not exceeding three. It has to be more than one, but not exceeding three. So we, we always say that it's sound. So this is in between 2.34 and 2.51 is in between one and three. So uh, we say that uh, it's still sound because of what? It's more than? It's more than, it's more than one. Eh? Hence, no what? Hence, no short term, no short term liquidity concern. No short term liquidity concern. Meaning that the assets of this company are capable of meeting the obligations we have. When the ratio is more than one, and not exceeding three. So the money we have, the money we have is capable, the cash we have, the current assets we have, they are capable of meeting the short-term obligations. So this is a sound, a sound current ratio. It's a sound current ratio. What about, uh, what about, uh, what about this uh, acid test ratio? How can you comment about that? The acid test ratio, which comment can I give? to the acid test ratio. Which comment can I add to that? So again, the acid test ratio, you can see it has done what? Foreign, from 1.42 to 1.16, to 1.16. So you can say acid test, so the acid test, acid test has foreign. The acid test has foreign, uh, but, still, but still seems to be, but still seems to be quite, 
but still seems to be quite reasonable. Why is this reasonable? Let me explain. Let me give an explanation in written form here. Wait, why am I saying it's reasonable even if it has foreign? Uh, what does it assist us? So let me explain here. Let me give you an interpretation. So if the acid test, we will see that if the acid test, if the acid test, if the acid test uh, ratio uh, is much lower, is much lower, is much lower than the current ratio, is much lower than the current ratio, is much lower. Like now it was lower than the current ratio because our current ratio was two point something, two point something. It means, what does it mean? It means, it means that a company, it means that a company, a company's current, a company's current, a company's current assets, a company's current assets are highly, are highly dependent on what? Remember, we deducted what here? We deducted what here? We deducted, we deducted inventory, are highly dependent on inventory. Like now in this scenario, they are highly dependent on inventory because now this one is becoming lower. This one is becoming lower than the current ratio, which was two point something, meaning that the company's current assets are highly dependent on inventory, are highly dependent on inventory. But we say on the other hand, on the other hand, on the other hand, a very high, a very high, a very high uh, ratio, a very high ratio could indicate, a very high ratio could indicate uh, that accumulated, that accumulated uh, cash, accumulated cash is sitting idle, is sitting idle uh, rather than, rather than being, uh, rather than, rather than being reinvested rather than being reinvested, rather than being reinvested, comma, returned to shareholders, returned to the, returned to the shareholders, returned to the shareholders, returned to the shareholders, or otherwise put into productive, or otherwise put, or otherwise put into, into productive use. So I mean that even if the ratio, our, because we have said if the acid test ratio is much lower than the current ratio, like now it is lower, yes, which is okay. We have said it's more dependent on, uh, it was more dependent on this inventory because we deducted inventory from our current assets. Meaning that this one has fallen, it was, uh, it, it was dependent on the inventory. But on the other hand, a very high ratio could indicate that. So if this one could have been high, it means that the cash we have because already we have deducted the inventory the cash we have is idle which is not good at all so meaning that even if it has foreign that is good to the company because the cash we have is not idle that is why we are we said that acid test has foreign but still seems to be quite reasonable yes on the other hand a very high ratio if it could have been high it could indicate that the accumulated cash is sitting idle rather than being reinvested. That is, returned to the shareholders or otherwise uh, put into productive use. I think you have understood, eh? I think you, you have understood why I said it's quite reasonable. So from there now, we can do the last part of the question. We can do the last part of the, this question, eh? The last ratio. Our last ratio, our last ratio, our last ratio, our last ratio, our last ratio. So our last ratio is for the internal management. Which are some of the ratios you can uh, use to talk about the internal management? Fikta, Joel, and the other students, and the other students following, which are some of the ratios I can use? to talk about internal management. You comment, you give a comment. 
or in which area would I look at? Which ratios would I look at to talk about the internal management? So to talk about the internal management, I will look at uh, the turnover ratios. Eh? The turnover ratios. What would the turnover ratios tell us? I will look at some of the turnover ratios. What does the turnover ratios tell us? So for the turnover ratios, it shows the ability of the firm to utilize its assets for the purposes of obtaining efficiency. So I can write so that uh, you get something. Shows the ability. It shows the ability, ability of the firm of the firm ability of the firm to do what uh, to utilize to utilize the assets to utilize the assets uh, for the purpose of doing what for the purpose for the purpose so for the purpose of obtaining efficiency of obtaining efficiency of obtaining efficiency of obtaining efficiency in management of assets of the business in management of assets of the business assets of the business so i will look at some of the uh, turnover ratios to show that they show the ability of the firm to utilize the assets uh, for the purpose of obtaining efficiency in management of them in management so I've said that shows the ability of the firm, shows the ability of the firm to utilize the assets, to utilize the assets for the purpose of obtaining efficiency in the management of the assets of the business. So which are some of the turnover ratios? Like now I can look at uh, on how the company was correcting its debts. Because now if you correct your debt in a short period, it means that you are at a good position, you are liquid. Uh, you are correcting your liabilities in a short period in terms of days. So it, it doesn't take long for you to get your debt corrected. At least you will be getting money from your debtors in a short period. So which are some of these, uh, which is the ratio uh, for the correction of uh, a debt? So I will look at a ratio of uh, average correction period, average correction period. So the average correction period the average correction period this is the first ratio i look at average correction period or we call it datas or we call it the datas uh, turnover in days turnover in days turnover in days so the formula the formula itself we can be able to mention about this average datas of a credit sales average datas we talk about the average datas we divide what credit sales we talk about credit sales terms are uh, 365 days in a year 365 days because we need to know the period they were taking to correct the data's balances so we have 2021 we have 2020 we have 2020 so average data is uh, average data so for the 2020 for the 2020 then 2021 eh? so for the 2020 then 2021 it was 20 uh, i have been using 2020 and 2021 and since our question was uh, 2022 and 2021 sorry 2022 2021 so but you understand all of the changes which will be made so it was 2022 2021 so for the even for the others i've been talking about it was 2022 2021 but that one doesn't have any impact on our answers there's no any impact on our answers. Eh? So it's all about 2022, 2021. So what about 2021? What do we have for the 2021? 2021 data, it was 2021 or what? It's 22, oh, I have just looked at a different question, sorry. It's correct, it's 2020. It's 2020, 2021. I have been correct. So I have just looked at a different question from my past paper. So I have been correct. Our Everything has been correct. So never correct anything about the years. We have been correct from the initial period about the years. But the years doesn't have an impact. It's only that you understand it's two years. Eh? So let's look at 2020, 2021. So remember that for 2020, we have the data. Eh? 
so the data is so the data is for 2020 so data is for 2020 data is for 2020 trade receivables 80 80 to 40 you divide with what 80 to 40 divided by with the credit sales so the sales which we have there we assume it's on credit the 972 600 972 600 so times 365 times 365 then uh, for 2021 2021 remember that we have the one for 2020 so now to get the average remember that if there was another one before i even talk about 2021 if there was another data balances for the year 2019 to get the average here, I could have added the one for 2019 and 2020, I divide by two. But now we don't have the uh, data for 2019. But here for 2021, I have the one for 2021, which is uh, the data is 86, 86, 740, 86, 740. So to get the average, since I have the one for 2020, I have to add. 80 to 40, then I divide by what? 2. Then the answer from there is the one I will divide with the sales, which is assumed to be on credit from the statement of profit and loss, which is 1167, 800, then times 365. Times 365. So what do we have here? What, what am I getting there? Uh, what am I getting there? So 80, so 80 to 40, divide by 972, 600, times 365. So I get 30.1 days. Eh? Then this one, uh, I take the data of 2021, which is 86, 740, plus the one for 2020. 80 to 40, I divide by two, then I divide with my credit sales. The sales which we assume is on credit, eh? the 11, so the answer divided by 11, 67, 800, times 365, times 365. So I repeat again, there's a mistake with my calculator. So 86740 plus, 80 to 40 divide by 2 then divide 1167 800 times 365 so this is 26.1 days eh? 0.1 days so remember that these days decreased the days from 2020 to 2021 the days of correcting our dates dates they decreased. So meaning what? What does that one show? Is that good to the company? Is that one good to the company? Hmm? Because obvious data, so what does the data show? The number of times average data have been converted into what? Into cash during the year. So the days have reduced from the year 2020 to 2021, from 30 days to 26 days. So what would you comment about this when you come to the comments? They appear to be, in this company now, in the current year 2021, they appear to be efficiency of the firm's credit control. Yeah, there's efficiency of credit control. The, the, the accountant who was dealing with the data here is now becoming more efficient. Eh? So there's an efficient credit control because the days are reducing. Eh? from 30 to 26. I will write that comment and when I will be talking about the comment, I will, when I will be talking about the comments. When I will be talking about the comment, I will write about it more. So another issue I will look at uh, to address the aspect of internal management, so here I have picked one ratio, which is the average 
correction period stroke data turnover in days from the turnover ratios. I can go even again to profitability ratios, profitability ratios, profitability ratios, and pick one. What does the profitability ratio tell us? What does the profitability ratio tell us? Measure the firms in terms of return that is being generated from the funds employed into the business. So this one, it measures what? Measures the firms, measures the firms in terms of, in terms of the return, in terms of the return, in terms of the return that are being, that are being generated that are being generated from, that are being generated from the funds, from the funds employed into the business. Measures the funds in terms of the return that are being generated from the funds employed in the business. So under this, I will be able to look at one ratio, the return on capital employed the return on capital employed, return on capital employed. We call it low C, return on capital employed. How do you get the return on capital employed? How do you get the return on capital employed? You take your net profit before interest and tax, profit before interest and tax, you divide with what? Capital employed, you divide with the capital employed, you divide with the capital employed times what? 100%. Remember that for the capital employed, how do you get capital employed? How do you get capital employed? How do you get the capital employed? So to get the capital employed is equity plus debt. Eh? Equity plus debt or, or you take current assets minus, not current assets, sorry, total assets minus, current liabilities, minus current liabilities, minus the current liabilities, minus the current liabilities. Let's talk about uh, 2021, 2020. Let's talk about the two periods. So let's look at, uh, let's look at these. Uh -huh. So remember that uh, we can say that Profit before interest and tax. Looking at the question, we have the profit before tax, but which is inclusive of interest. Interest is finance cost. From the statement of profit and loss, huh? we have the profit before tax, but which is inclusive of interest. So I will pick that profit, uh, profit before tax, but which is inclusive of interest. So what I will do before interest. That is after they have deducted the interest. Eh? We have the profit before tax, sorry. We have the profit before tax, meaning that they have already deducted interest. So meaning that I have to add the interest back because it's profit before interest and tax. So my profit before tax from the, from the question is 37, 372. So I need to add back the interest, which is 3968 has been deducted there because we need the profit before interest and tax. Then capital employed. I will take total assets and minus current liabilities. Total assets is 224, uh, 630 minus, minus 84, minus 84, 950 uh, times 100 percent, times 100 percent. So for the other year, profit before, before tax, profit before tax, but after interest, so meaning that I would add the interest back because I needed the profit before interest and taxes. So the profit before, uh, before, before tax, but after interest is, uh, we have 3508. So I added the interest back because they are deducted this, 3968. Then my total assets is 194, uh, 194, 884, 884 minus current liabilities, which is 73, 73, 724. 
And this answer I get here, remember we have to multiply with 100%. We need to multiply with 100%. So if you do this and this, and you could be able to get here 29.60%, and this one will be able to give you 28.45%. So let's give the comment. Let's give, let's give our comment. So right now for this one, I already commented that since uh, we know uh, what is the uh, average correction period, the or we call it data turnover period, we said is the average is the time, eh? uh, the number of times eh? the average data have been converted into cash. Eh? So like now we have thirty, then it reduced it to twenty six. Eh? So what does that one show? If you were to comment, you could have said that, you could have said that. Uh, the credit control is becoming more efficient eh? because the day the day is reduced. Eh? The day is reduced from 30 to 26. From 30 to 26. Because here is 2020, 2021. So that is all. You know that. I don't have to write. Eh? Then what about this? Remember that the return on capital employed. The return on capital employed. Uh, the return on capital employed. Measuring the firms uh, in terms of the return that is being generated from the funds employed. Eh? So remember that, did it increase the return the company was getting in the year 2020 to 2021? It increased from 28.45 to 29.60. So there was an increase. There was an increase in terms of the returns they are getting, in terms of the funds employed in the business, the capital employed in the business. So the, the return, it increased. So you could have said that the return increased from this percentage, 28.45 to 29.60. This question was having clean 20 marks, clean 20 marks. And that is how you could have scored the 20 marks. Because the first thing they asked is all about the limitations. We have done the limitations. The second, the ratios for the users, that is shareholders, trade payables, internal management, then uh, you comment. So I have been commenting as I continue doing the question. I have been doing the comments, meaning that we are done with the question. So guys, 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 I said that uh, for the previous sitting, I will do all the questions. So far, I think for financial reporting, I have done three questions. I did the uh, area, I did group accounting, Sometimes back, even before the exam was released, I did group accounting. Last week on Sunday, I did uh, cash flow statements. Today, I've done ratios, the financial analysis. Eh? So meaning that I've done 60% of that exam. I've done the 60% of the exam. The only to, uh, thing remaining in that uh, sitting, there are sitting for financial reporting and analysis. The only question I've not done is question one, which is the theory. And the question two, which was concerning circles. I will do that in our next session, the circles. Eh? That is the one which require computations. The other one is just theory. But a question that is question one is just theory. So what I could request is that uh, other than the rest, sitting paper, in my live class, the Zoom classes, the one which I've done during the evening, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., Wednesday and Thursdays, we do more past papers than what I'm doing in these live YouTube sessions. So welcome to my Zoom classes. Uh, we do more. Remember that once you do more questions, that is based on topics, because uh, on the Zoom live classes, we do topic-wise. If it's group, we do questions for group accounting. If it's published, we do questions for published. If it's branch, we do questions for branch. But I always introduce the topic as if uh, it's a normal physical class. Never waste your time attending a physical class. Never waste your resources moving from one area to another. Get out of job, go to your house. We do online. Thank you for your attendance and welcome to my Zoom classes. If you could like to contact me, we do, we do more of these uh, sessions. This is my number, the 07 uh, 28 760 546. So for the guys who are outside Kenya, remember that you have to add plus 254, plus 254, then 28, 7, 6, 5, 46. Thank you for your time.
and welcome in the coming sessions. This marks the end of the session today. See you next time. Bye.